What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. Today, we're going to be going through a little week three, week two preview, lab three preview, okay? So, like I was saying in previous videos, I'm going to be making lab previews and lab summaries for pretty much every lab every week. So make sure you subscribe, um, like the video, share them with your friends. These videos are designed for Child 101 students, but the anatomy applies to just about anyone interested in studying anatomy. Okay, so this area here, we're, just, uh, we're, we're looking at the upper limb, and we are going to be looking at the blood supply of the upper limb. Okay, so we're going through the axillary artery and the branches coming off the axillary artery okay so let's go ahead and get started so one of our first landmarks here is our subclavian artery our subclavian artery here is going to kind of become my axillary artery at a particular landmark we have okay so here is my first rib my first rib is going to represent the landmark in which the subclavian artery will become the axillary artery so you can see here, the end of the first rib, we have that subclavian artery terminating and becoming the axillary artery, okay? So that's gonna be an important landmark for us. Once we have the axillary artery, we're gonna have many branches coming off of our axillary artery. Let's go ahead and draw a little mnemonic that we have. The mnemonic is screw the lawyer, save all patients. Now that stands for superior thoracic artery, superior thoracic artery, thoracochromial trunk, thoracochromial trunk, lateral thoracic artery, and then we have my subscapular artery, subscapular artery. And then we have an anterior and a posterior humeral circumflex artery. Okay, anterior and posterior humeral circumflex artery. So basically, we have these different branches coming off the axillary artery. We have different parts of this as well. So we're going to have one part that has one branch. So the first part of the axillary artery is going to have one branch coming off of that part. My second part is going to have two branches coming off of it. Okay. So second part has two branches. And my third part has three branches coming off of it. Now these parts are arbitrary, right? We just kind of say, yes, there's first part, second part, third part. Um, but in terms of identifying, it's really just more important to make sure we're identifying the, actually ar the actual arteries that are coming off of the axillary artery. Okay. So don't get too don't get too caught up in the first, second, and third parts. But this kind of gives us a helpful mnemonic to digest all of the information and say, so, yeah, there's one branch coming off the first part, two branches coming off the second part, and three branches coming off the third part. Screw the lawyer, save all patients. Okay? So there's the mnemonic. Now let's go ahead and look at what we have here. So here's my little 3D demonstration, right? So let's zoom in a little bit and look at my superior thoracic artery so I actually think that I may have cut off my superior thoracic artery but let's go ahead and just draw it in so my superior thoracic artery right here superior thoracic artery would be coming off of my first part of my axillary artery right so this highlighted part here is we're at the axillary artery um, it's going to be coming off here, kind of traveling anteriorly. It's going to go to the intercostal muscles. Okay, so intercostal muscles. So this was my superior thoracic artery. Superior thoracic artery. So that's the first branch. So we covered that. Now let's move on to my thoracochromial trunk. Check this out. Here's my thoracochromial trunk. Now a, another little mnemonic we're going to want to know is cadavers are dead people right cadavers are dead people this means we're going to have different branches coming off of my 
my thoracal acromial trunk. So we have four branches coming off the thoracal acromial trunk. We have a clavicular branch, clavicular branch. We have an acromial branch, acromial branch. We have a deltoid branch, deltoid, and then we have a pectoral branch, pectoral branch. So the clavicular branch goes to the clavicle, the acromial branch goes to the acromion, deltoid branch goes to the deltoid, and then we have pectoral branch going to the pectoralis muscles. Okay, so there's my thoracal acromial trunk right here. Okay, so here's that thoracal acromial trunk, and then we have all those different branches, right? Here's a deltoid branch, here's a acromial branch, here's probably a pectoral branch, there's a clavicular branch, and then we have the pectoral branch, okay? So those are the four different branches. So we have screw the lawyer, save all patients. We just covered screw the, let's go to L. So here's my lateral thoracic artery. Lateral thoracic artery, so screw the lawyer, save all patients. Lateral thoracic artery. Now when we're looking at lab and we're trying to figure out what is this tag structure, what is this artery that I'm looking at? You always wanna name the artery based on where it goes, okay? Not where it's coming from. So this lateral thoracic artery is going to my serratus anterior. That's why we call it a lateral thoracic artery. Not necessarily where it's coming off of, right? So should be coming off of the axillary artery, but many times there is variation and you know th these branches could be coming off all over the place. So really it matters on where is it going? Is it going to the my serratus anterior? We're gonna call it the lateral thoracic artery. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the different pro sections, all right? Screw the lawyer, save all patients. So now we're gonna to go to S. So S for subscapular artery. So here's my subscapular artery, subscapular artery. My subscapular artery is going to split into two branches, okay? I'm gonna have a, a branch going to the latissimus dorsi, and I'm gonna have a branch that kind of wraps around and goes to the scap to around the scapula, okay? So I'm gonna have a thoracal dorsal artery. So here's my thoracal dorsal artery going to my latissimus dorsi, okay? latissimus dorsi. And then that other branch we mentioned was is going to be my circumflex scapular artery. So here's my circumflex scapular artery. So these two, and most of the prosections I've seen, do come off that bifurcation of my subscapular artery, okay? So we have subscapular artery splits into a circumflex scapular and a thoracal dorsal artery, all right? But remember, always name the arteries based off where they're going, not where they're coming from. So that covers screw the lawyer, save. Now we have all patients. Screw the lawyer, save all patients. So A for anterior humeral circumflex artery, and then P for patients posterior humeral circumflex artery. Now check that out. My posterior humeral circumflex artery is actually going to anastomose with my with my anterior humeral circumflex artery, right? So anastomosis just means that the blood supply kind of comes together. There's a little bit of collateral circulation there. Okay, so that's my anterior and my posterior humeral circumflex arteries. And notice that we got the veins running with them as well. Okay, we got the veins running with them too. Um, in lab, it's really important to when you're trying to confirm, is this my posterior humeral circumflex or my anterior, that we try to find this other structure called my axillary nerve. Now you're gonna learn about the axillary nerve when you go through the brachial plexus. But for right now, keep in mind and make a note of it right now that the axillary nerve travels with my posterior humeral circumflex around that surgical neck of the humerus, okay? So they travel together kind of around um, that, that surgical neck of the humerus, okay? So, there's that surgical neck of the humerus, and check that out. There's the artery right there. Okay, great. That's anterior, and then you also have the posterior here. When identifying it in this axillary region, you want to find that posterior humeral circumflex running with the axillary, the axillary nerve. Okay, huge, huge landmark to confirm, yes, this is that artery. Okay, so this was just a general introduction to the blood supply. So we started with subclavian, we ended up with axillary, and another thing I wanna mention, so at the level of the teres major, at the end of that teres major, at the inferior part of that teres major, right, so here's that teres major muscle. That's actually the, that's a good landmark to 
for us to determine when the axillary artery is going to end and when the brachial artery is going to begin. So check that out. Here's the brachial artery. Here's the axillary artery. Here's the brachial artery and then the axillary artery. So again, that teres major is a really good landmark to show the axillary artery ending and my brachial artery beginning. Okay, and we'll go through some of the blood supply of the arm and more of the upper limb later in the next in the next videos. But for now, I just wanted us to get introduced to this axillary blood supply and get familiar with the branches and um, get ready for lab. Okay, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time.